So once you get to this point, yesterday hopefully you got a good start on it. Uh, you chose three items, you're kind of getting them in the right place, you have a decent composition. Um, don't be afraid to continue to make those minor adjustments with a number two pencil in the beginning of your drawing. Uh, for example here on the on the pumpkin where I'm drawing right here there's a there's a corn stalk that's going back behind there coming out from about right here running into the top of the skull leaving me a nice negative space right there and then I notice that the skull comes up a little bit too high so just continue to make those <clears throat> adjustments here in the beginning erasing changing stuff around looking at the general shapes first you can see I got the general shape of the kettle the general shape of the pumpkin the general shape of the skull and then after that you're going to want to start working on <clears throat> uh, giving the drawing a more finished look okay so I'm going to work over here on the kettle a little bit today and maybe into the pumpkin a little bit I'm still going to start with a number two pencil and so uh, <clears throat> I'm going to begin to look at lights and, and darks, the general shadows. You can see there's a clear shadow right here on the side of the pumpkin, my, identifying my light source. The light source is coming from the left. So even over here on the kettle, uh, even though the light source is coming from the left, the whole thing is its not going to be bright white. It is kind of white. Um, but just like the shading exercises we've been doing, it might be good for you to tone it a little bit. <clears throat> That's maybe a little dark for what I want to go but that's alright because I can always come back I'm going to clean up my edges here with an eraser a little bit and then I don't know if you guys can see that from where you're looking you're looking at the actual thing but this left side of this is a very clear highlight so just like we practiced before working from a toned ground I can begin to capture that light by erasing <clears throat> and then Again, I'm still not even using one of those shading pencils. I'm just using a number two pencil for some clarification of edges. Uh, as this thing you know, moves on into the kettle, there's a distinct contour right here. This is where you guys are going to begin to start developing your, your own style. Uh, the light is being blocked by the spout of the kettle, casting a shadow. Um, just try to see the shadow as a shape of darkness. You can see I'm just, again, I'm not even using the shading pencil yet. I'm casting a nice dark shadow right there. Be a good approach to this kettle, again, to kind of tone it a little bit, tone the whole thing. You don't want to muddy up your drawing. You want there to be clear distinctions, clear shapes of light and dark. But a good way to begin those is to just do like I'm doing right here, just like we did with the fisherman. Uh, and several other drawings that we've done where I'm capturing the shapes of light and dark. Now these little details like this, like this rim, the rim of this thing, this is where you guys take some time and some concentration and try to capture those little edges the way that you see them. <clears throat> like the shadow when I began drawing this, the shadow was just a really just muddled up mess. It's a lot cleaner than that. Before I can actually get that clean shadow, I'm going to need to erase a little bit. Define my edges, define my contours. Runs right into the pumpkin. Start focusing on some line quality here. You don't want to outline everything with a really heavy dark line. Um, for example, on this stem, well, one side of it could be really dark, but then some of those lines in the middle might be a thinner line, a thinner contour. How about, how about watch this, what I mean by line quality. The, uh, the grooves on the pumpkin. Watch what I can do with just taking the, the line, it's dark to the beginning, and then I make it thinner, and then I make it darker. So just by that line quality there, that variation of line, giving me a sense of depth and dimension, uh, before you begin to do this, before you really start pushing those dark values, you want to make sure everything's in the right place because obviously that's a lot harder to erase. Um, so just begin working through the drawing that way once you have everything set. Feel free to use the dark shading pencils when you need to, but you'd be surprised what you can get with a number two just pushing hard. <clears throat> 